Welcome back to my course that industrial biotechnology. This antibiotic streptomycin, this is produced through the bacterial fermentation process. So, <clears throat> so let us uh, give the introduction to streptomycin. It is a broad spectrum antibiotics um, and belonging to the uh, what you call aminoglycoside family. This is very important. This is aminoglycoside family. We know that uh, canamycin also include in this, gentamicin, canamycin that uh, include on this particular, in this particular category. Then it is active against the gram negative bacteria and a number of bacterial infection such as the tuberculosis, mycobacterium, uh, Abium complex, endocarditics, and brucellosis, uh, the different plague uh, and different uh, rat virus vivers are treated by streptomycin. The streptomycin, since it is a broad spectrum antibiotics, it can be used for, uh, for killing the different germs. Now, if you look at the organisms that uh, streptomyces griseus. This is used for the production of streptomycin and this is commonly found in the soil and it is a gram positive bacteria. The streptomyces griseus strain are well known producer of antibiotics and significantly it is a secondary metabolite. I told you that uh, your penicillin also secondary metabolites, also cephalosporin also considered as a secondary metabolite. The, they produce grey spores, masses and grey yellow reverse pigment when they grow as colony. They grow at the white pH 5 to 11. This is the specialty of this organism and this is how they are look, looks under the microscope. The, if you look at the history of streptomycin, it was first isolated uh, October 19, 1943 by Albert Sutz, the PhD student laboratory in Selman Abraham Waxman at Rutgers University USA. And then Waxman and his laboratory staff discovered the several antibiotics including actinomycin, uh, clevacin, step, uh, streptocin and streptomycin, gysin, neomycin and different type of antibiotics they, they, they discovered. Streptomycin was the first antibiotics cured the tuberculosis. Uh, we know that TB is the deadly disease and, uh, uh, and if you look at the history, lot of, lo lots of you know, uh, well known people, they were killed by uh, due to the TB infection. So, uh, in 1952, Waxman uh, was the recipient of the Nobel Prize in uh, Physiology in or Medicine. Uh, the, it is on the World Health Organization list of essential medicine and uh, the most effective and safe medicine needed in the health system. So, this is the specialty of the streptomycin. This is very effective against the tuberculosis and is a, as the WHO, they consider this is a very safe medicine for this. Now, let us see that the, how this uh, antibiotics works. Uh, that streptomycin is a protein synthesizer inhibitor. That uh, essential protein that required for the growth of the bacteria that, uh, that synthesis they inhibit and uh, how it inhibits because it binds with the small 16S RNA of the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosomes interfering with the binding of formyl methionyl trans T RNA to 30S subunit. This is how they are binding here. And, uh, and this lead to complete or partially inhibit the protein synthesis eventually the death of the cells. Humans have the ribosomes which are structurally different from those in bacteria. So, drug does not have uh, this effect in the human cells. So, human cells 
that uh, this doesn't have uh, this effect. Uh, but this this kind of uh, biochemical activity that we don't don't have the human system, but this is only applicable to the bacterial system. They disturb the the pro essential some protein synthesis, and they, they kill the microorganisms. Now, if you look at the biosynthesis pathway, the uh, glucose it produces the glucose six phosphate, then it produces that. Um, isocetol this one phosphate and then D glucose one phosphate do glucosamine six phosphate then myoinositol this all when they comp the combine and ultimately they form the dihydroseptomycin six phosphate and then it ultimate comes finally the streptomycin production. Now this streptomycin uh, required production required 30 enzymatic steps because the several steps are required before it produce uh, streptomycin. Uh, glucose 6 phosphate takes three independent route to respectively produce the streptidine 6 phosphate and L dehydrostreptose and N methyl glucosamine. Go. The former two compounds condense to form an intermediate which layer combines with methyl glucosamine to produce dihydrostreptomycin 6 phosphate. And this compound in the next couple of reaction gets converted to streptomycin. This is how the streptomycin is produced biochemically. Now, industrial production of streptomycin is like this, it is produced through the submerged fermentation process. I, I already explained in case of penicillin fermentation process that we use two type of fermentation, not only penicillin in citric acid, also mostly I discuss in citric acid fermentation process that uh, it is usually produced both by 20 percent citric acid it is produced by surface fermentation and 80 percent by submerged fermentation process. And mostly what we use in the fermentation unit submerged fermentation, the reason is that that whole whole fermentation broth we get the uh, your microorganism will grow and give the product and that is why it is very effective. So, submerged fermentation is very uh, is used here, it is the secondary metabolites and spores are maintained um, as soil stock or lipolyze and, and are used as for inoculations. And uh, this is then transferred to germinator where the biomass is increased for, for inoculating the fermenter. So, here, here, here also it is same as the, we shall have to produce the inoculum before we, we take transfer we use this uh, in the production fermenter. And this is like this, you have fast log phase, you have you can dioxic type type of growth, you can see it here that it grows uh, dioxic growth, we know that uh, dioxic growth means in the uh, it is possible when your organism consume one particular carbon source uh, and then when it is exhausted then only then the other carbon source will be utilized. Then it is called dioxic growth. This usually it has been found that streptomycin fermentation process is follow the dioxic growth pattern. Now, this uh, under the microscope is it is very interesting, it is, has some resemblance uh, have with the uh, fungal fermentation, though so, it is a bacterial fermentation process, but it has some resemblance because you see in case of vegetative cells, they have lot of branches. We can see it is what we have have in case of fungal fermentation process. The bacterial fermentation, this um, streptomyces griseus also have this kind of lot of branches, and also it has this, this kind of small formation that is quite common in case of fungal fermentation process. So, <coughs> lipolyzed spore uh, culture are inoculated into uh, soya flower agar media and they are inoculated at 27 degrees centigrade for 2 to 3 weeks. The spores are then transferred in the sec flux and following the biomass have accumulation and inoculation is done in a sterile media a concentration 5 to 10 percent. I told you 
whenever we use any kind of inoculum to the production fermenter, we always use 5 to 10 percent of the uh, volume by volume of the production fermenter. I told you that if the, if the production fermenter size is 100 cubic meter, then 5 percent is about uh, 5 cubic meter and 10 percent is about 10 cubic meter. The volume of inoculum for this uh, fermentation process is about for 5 to 10 cubic meter. So, usually what we do? We take 90 cubic meter of the media and 5 to 10 cubic meter of the inoculum we inoculate to make the volume of 100 cubic meter. Now, this is the industrial media formulation for streptomycin production. We have two media, one is Woodruff and Magdaniel, Mag and, 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 and another is the Hoken who, who who Hull, this media. Then this media contains the swabin milk, but it does not contain other media does not contain swabin milk, but it has the extracted swabin milk. So, but this, uh, this is you know, total swabin milk that is here used here and distilled dry soluble that is also and pH we maintain here 7.3 to 7.5. Glucose, ammonia and phosphate high quantity inhibit the streptomycin production. Now, if you look at this uh, fermentation requirement media consists of carbon source like glucose, starch and dextrin, nitrogen source natural occurring agricultural substances such as swabin, corn strip liquor, cotton seed mill, cane, uh, casein hydrolyzed. Uh, I told you casein hydrolyzes mean casein is a kind of protein when casein we hydrolyze with the help of some kind of protease enzyme it degraded to the different amine and that uh, the, the different uh, different size of protein or it may produce some kind of free amino acid also so this is uh, this is uh, that is uh, that is kind of soluble material the because when uh, when pro big protein molecule degrade to the smaller protein molecule it is becoming soluble and that is why we call it casein hydrolyzed yeast and its extract uh, etc inorganic substances such as the ammonium sulfate and ammonium phosphate. The vegetable and animal fats like swabin oil, uh, then linseed oil and lard oil that is used um, uh, more the fatty acid having more than 14 carbon chain length. Because, of, because I told you one common thing that we have in the, in the macrobial fermentation process is the foam formation and particularly when we have aerobic fermentation, we have a foam formation and during foam formation, uh, I told you that, uh, um, that uh, uh, this is uh, it will keep on rising and if you enter into the mechanical seal, your, your system will be uh, contaminated and then, then uh, the whole fermentation process will suffer. You have to discard the whole fermentation broth. So, this is this is an important thing that uh, everybody has to consider that how to subside this, uh, this uh, foam. And I told you before also the different fermentation process, we use the different antifoam oil because we shall have to, we choose the antifoam oil on the fact that the kind of antifoam oil that we use that should not affect the fermentation process. Now, in case of streptomycin fermentation process, we, they found the swabin oil, linseed oil and lard oil, the which has uh, uh, for more than uh, 14 carbon chains, they are suitable for this as a uh, that, uh, that uh, as a antifoam oil. Now, fermentation conditions at the optimum temperature 28 degrees centigrade, pH range is 7.6 to 8, high agitation and aeration are required. The fermentation times 5 to 7 uh, days aeration is uh, 0.5 to 1 BVM. Uh, this I want to point out that BVM means the I hope you might be knowing BVM means volume of air, volume of air per volume of liquid per minute. So, it is like this. Suppose we have this is a fermenter and the walking volume, let us assume 
this we are doing the aeration here in. So, let us assume this walking volume is 10 liter and, uh, and if you say uh, this is 1 pvm that means, 1 liter 1, one liter uh, 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 the 1 pvm means 10 liter if you 1 pvm 10, 10 liter per 10 liter volume of the medium per minute. So, this is like this, this is the this is how the aeration is considered. So, we shall have to the flow rate of this here the flow rate will be 10 liter per minutes. So, since it is capacity 10 liters, so BBM will be 1 BBM is like this. Inadequate supply of oxygen leads to accumulation of pyruvate and lactate that is also very important factor. In the phase involved in the streptomycin fermentation several phases are there. In that phase 1 it lasts for 24 hours, pH increases to 7.5. This highly active, uh, this highly active uh, pro, the proteolytic property of the organism set free the ammonia and that into the media of the swamil. And, uh, and this, uh, this due to the formation of the ammonia, the pH rises. Streptomycin is produced less quantity at this phase and rapid growth occurs to produce mycelial biomass and uh, we have already shown though it is the bacterial cells, but it the growth characteristics is little bit similar with the fungal cells. Uh, however, uh, glucose uptake is low. Now, in the in case of phase 2, it is the most critical rapid production of uh, septomycin is observed extend for 1 day to 5 to 6 days under sterile conditions and then very less growth of biomass is observed, ammonia is consumed and uh, weight of the mycelia remain constant because this is also a secondary metabolized production because this also take place at the stationary phase of the fermentation. The phase involved um, that uh, high this phase in the involved the high glucose uptake, but phase 1 I have shown the glucose uptake is less, but here is very high pH increases to 8 and <laughs> phase 3 the sugar depletion occurs and then antibiotics production ceases, the harvesting is done and pH remain fairly constant between 7.6 and, and uh, 9. Now, if you look at the different profiles of the streptomycin production, it looks like this. Now, here it is very, very the, the important thing is the glucose, if you look at this is the carbon source, this is keep on decreasing like this and this is in the fermentation time in days. So, after 6 days of fermentation, most of the glucose will be exhausted. Now, if you look at the mycelium or cell mass production, if you keep on increasing and uh, it is then uh, it is uh, it is biphasic type it increases like this then it increases like this then it decreases like this so it is like this then ph if you look at ph is keep on steadily increases initially it will be at a very slow rate but finally it increases quite high and here is the streptomycin production is the when this organism almost come here, it will produce like this septomycin production take place and slowly slowly it increases and then it ends the plateau, then again it decreases like this. So, maximum you can say the maximum streptomycin production that take place on, <coughs> on uh, 7 days of fermentation. On 7 days of fermentation, we get the maximum streptomycin production. Now, streptomycin recovery also very important aspects because, uh, because how the streptomycin recovery takes place. Now, this is usually take place by the adsorption phenomena. Now, how it is done? The we have the filtered broth, then we separate the cell, maybe uh, the either centrifugation, mostly we use by the uh, cell separate by centrifugation process, then we have the dilute broth. We, we pass through this amber light, this ICR, sodium form ion with the cation exchange 
<coughs> column we used to pry pass that then your streptomycin get adsorbed on the surface then we remove the ions by washing with EDTA at pH 8 <coughs> then <coughs> finally we do the elution by 2.5 normal H2SO4 until the pH drop to 5 and then we get the liquid that liquid we decolorize by using with the DAR, DAR SOC G6 column then and then antigen removal by filtration with the polyacrylamide gel cellulose acetate or by dialysis cellulose acetate you know that this is the kind of membrane that we have and then finally we do the uh, concentration by evaporation techniques and after evaporation we we get uh, this uh, powder white powder in the form of, form of the streptomycin sulfate so we get the streptomycin in the form of streptomycin sulfate the recovery of uh, streptomycin is that micelle is separated from the broth by filtration then uh, streptomycin and other amino uh, glycosides are the basic are basic in nature the remaining liquid is then percolated through the cation exchange resin column where the streptomycin gets absorbed then it is finally eluted by washing with buffer and uh, and further impurities are removed by treating with sodium hypochlorite or edta or activated carbon because activated carbon I, I i told you before also largely used by chemical and biochemical industry as a decolorizing agent and then streptomycin can be precipitated in the form of sulfate when when it combines with the H2SO4 it forms the calcium streptomycin sulfate with soluble and uh, the purified streptomycin sulfate solution is concentrated under vacuum and dried and, uh, and dried it aseptically and finally the product is tested and purity and package so this is this is uh, this is how the streptomycin production take place because uh, and uh, let me conclude here that uh, uh, streptomycin is kind of antibiotic that is produced through the bacterial fermentation process um, uh, most of the antibiotics uh, is produced through the fungal fermentation process couple of antibiotics uh, they can only produce through the bacterial fermentation streptomyces griseus um, whose nature is little bit similar as compared to the fung fungal, fungal cell because it uh, the like you know fungal cell it has this population characteristics and also this streptomyces griseus it has also spoliation characteristics and uh, when it grow in the liquid it gives the uh, uh, that uh, 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 that uh, pyramid, that mycelial production that uh, same as in case of fungal cells so uh, and this uh, the streptomycin also considered as a secondary metabolites that produce and uh, it takes uh, quite long time like you know similar to penicillin fermentation process uh, penicillin and streptomycin the cephalosporin it same six to seven days fermentation process is taking place after the fermentation is over we 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 separate the cells by through the filtration process and since the if, if the size of the cells is big we can use the rotary vacuum filter for separating the cells and size is small then we use the centrifugation say technique and then we pass it through, through through this absorption column adsorption column to absorb the streptomycin and then uh, after adsorption we elute with uh, it, it is it is absorbed in the cation exchange membrane and then we elute uh, by using the 2.5 uh, normal of h2 support so that streptomycin sulfate will go out then we do little bit of purification we remove the impurities that present uh, in this particular uh, uh, the, uh, the elute that we color we remove and then finally we we dry it by using the vacuum dryer as we know that uh, that at a low vacuum the boiling point of the liquid that water decreases 
so you can you can if you if you do the vacuum uh, vacuum drying technique then you can preserve the quality of the media uh, and this whole operation is usually done under aseptic condition because uh, it is used for the therapeutic purpose so this is all about the antibiotics fermentation process i want to cover and try in the next class uh, by next lecture i try to discuss one very interesting fermentation that process that is used by the industry that is the baker's fermentation process thank you very much